I came to Jackson State uh, kind of on my visit, and I went in and talked to Coach Brent, and this is a real crazy story. Like, he never checks his email. Yeah. Like, Coach Brent isn't a big technology guy, and then, you know, like thousands of players probably email him every yeah. day, you know, trying to say they want to come play at Jackson State. And so he said, for whatever reason, the email just happened to already be open that day yeah. that I sent my film. And so I sent it, my coach sent it, it was around the same time. So he just happened to click the email. He said he don't even know how he got on it. Yeah. And so he said he clicked the email. And I got had like a little, they had like a little write up too about, you know, just my academic accomplishments and what type of player I was, what type of character I had, stuff like that. And so he said he looked at it, and he watched it, he liked the film, um, cause I had the ability to shoot the ball at a high level and I defended at a high level. And that's the type of guys he likes, Coach Brent is a defensive guy. Yeah. Like, and the fact that I was taking charges and willing to guard and stuff like that, that really stood out to him more than even shooting threes. And so he actually emailed me back, not even 10, 15 minutes after I sent it. Yeah. And I really was shocked because I had been sending film out like two or three days before that, like all yeah. throughout the days. And I might've got like three or four emails back from everybody. And so he was one of the people that emailed me back. And so um, he asked me to come down and play pickup with the guys and meet with him and talk to him and stuff. So I went down. Um, and I mean, the rest was history. Like he, he told me that story about, and so like he was like, "Man, that's crazy!" Like I never checked my email, yeah. and so like that moment was kind of like, "Man, this is where God want me to be. Like this is where He wants me to be." And so at first I was, I knew that, but I was still hesitant because Coach Brown had one year left on his contract. Yeah. And so I had taken a visit to Alcorn, I had gone to Mississippi Valley, I had gone to Alabama State on the visit, and I had also went to Young Harris, which was a D two, and University of West Georgia, which was a D two. Yeah. And so. While I'm on the visits, you know, some coaches try to talk you out of going to other schools and stuff like that. Yeah. And so Coach Brent, like Coach Brent was, a, he's a real straightforward person. So he told me, he's like, I got one year left on my contract. Like, I'm either gonna get an extension or I'm gonna get fired based off of what happens this season. Yeah. And so, I, it almost made me run from it. Like I was scared because I didn't know what was gonna happen in that one year. And a lot of times when new coaches come in, yeah. they send certain players home and stuff like that. When new coaches come in, I didn't want to go through that. I wanted to go somewhere where I felt like it was a more solid situation. So I visited all the other schools after I came to Jackson State. So then none of them just worked out. Like I didn't feel at home. Yeah. And so I was like, man, I'm just gonna go to Jackson State. And whatever's supposed to happen, gonna happen. So it's crazy. Now every school that I went to, because I thought Coach Brent was gonna be there, all their coaches have been fired. Yeah. And none of them were there. Coach Brent's the only coach that recruited me that's still at his job. Yeah. So I, like I said, I think everything worked out the way it's supposed to. God always works out stuff the way it's supposed to. So I know, uh, I think your first year here, you got injured. Mm -hmm. I know some of you hurt, like your ACL. I, I uh, broke my fibula. I broke your fibula. Yeah. So how was that process and everything going back? That was tough. Uh, I was in a real dark spot, honestly, um, mentally. Um, that took a toll on me because I had worked so hard during yeah. that summer, just trying to get right and be ready to play at this level. And I like the first couple weeks back at practice, I was having, I was looking great. Like I was shooting yeah. the ball well, I was moving well. I had dropped a little weight that I had picked up. And I, got, I, was, I felt like I was at my best, like as a basketball player. And we were in the middle of practice and I just came down wrong with one of my teammates' foot. Yeah. And my leg kind of turned and snapped. Yeah. And I, like, I felt that I knew immediately something was wrong. And I tried to stand up on it and I just couldn't stand up and stuff like that. Yeah. So I went, got the MRI, and got the x-rays and stuff. They told me what it was. Um, they put me in a cast, which luckily, it wasn't bad enough for me to have to have surgery. Yeah. So they put me in the cast and I was able to get, you know, do my recovery and do my rehab and things like that. So I get back on the court. But I, I was at a very dark place mentally just because I knew I put so much work in. Yeah. And for, I felt like it was unfair, you know. Uh, it worked, like I said, it worked itself out. Yeah. But like, even just, just going back through like any sport, I was not just for having a whole lot of injury and I was working for it. So what goes into your work at? Uh, my mom and my dad, um, like anybody that knows either one of my parents, they'll tell you like they're, like they're all in, like yeah. whatever they're doing, like they don't know how to, I tell people all the time, like my parents don't know how to halfway do anything. Like they're either gonna commit and do it all the way or just like, they're gonna tell you they can't do it. Like it's just in their nature. So seeing that my whole life, it just was instilled in me early. Like, if you're gonna do something, do it all the way. Yeah. And like, I, one of my favorite Bible verses is do everything wholeheartedly, it's unto God. 
And like, like that's kind of the mentality I took. Like, if I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it all the way. I'm not gonna have have way do it. And so that's really where that came from. All right. And then I know I interviewed a football player. You said with COVID going on, y'all get an extra year. So you plan to come back and return next year? I do. Yeah, um, we actually sat down with our coaches uh, last week and kind of discussed who was coming back and who was planning on just kind of moving on with whatever they had. And so we talked and we decided it was probably best for me to come back. I get to finish my masters yeah. and things like that. And get to play one more year. Try to win another championship. Okay. So you have been like, are you gonna try to go like overseas or maybe go to the G League or something, try to get to the league? Or um, you know? Honestly, for me, my biggest thing was getting the Masters. Yeah. Like, and honestly, like I wanna win another championship and win the Masters. And like, really like the way we lost in the SWAG tournament off of the, uh, well, being up by three, then getting the buzzer beat to get to go in overtime and lose yeah. by three in overtime. Like, I, I wanna go, I wanna win a tournament championship and finish my Masters. Like, that's yeah. the biggest thing for me. Um, if I happen to have a big year and make a big jump, and I do get an opportunity overseas, would I take it? Yes, but like I'm really ready to start my coaching career honestly after I get my masters. Okay. Yeah. So I'm trying to see like where would you want to start off coaching? Honestly, I would prefer to coach at the collegiate level. Yeah. Um, I've actually been offered some high school assistant coaching jobs and stuff like that because I have like my certification to teach and stuff. Yeah. But my passion is to be able to say, I, I want to go recruit, do player development and stuff like at the collegiate level. So whether that's starting at a junior college maybe, yeah. as an assistant or starting at B2 or you know whatever, starting as a grad assistant somewhere at the division one, uh, whatever the case may be, I'm, I'm really ready for that, for that grind of working my way through the college ranks. All right, so what would you tell somebody that's a senior in high school, like just coming out trying to, that might be trying to play a sport, what would you tell them to be looking forward to? What are some incitations they should have? Man, you gotta work. And like, what you thought was enough in high school, yeah, you gotta take it to another level once you get to college. Um, because now everybody was the best player on the high school team. You're not yeah. just head and shoulders above everybody else talent-wise. So you gotta be, be able to really separate yourself with your work ethic. Um, another thing I've been telling them, like, you gotta, you gotta fall in love with the game again. Yeah. Like, in high school, you kinda, like you said, you get by with just being more talented than everybody. And it's not a grind. Like you go to class eight to you know twelve or one. You go to practice, then you go do whatever you're gonna do for the day. Yeah. You know, what I'm saying? once you get here though, and like you're only doing that during basketball season. Like you can't even practice after school. You know, what I'm saying when it's night and season. Yeah. Like once you get here, it's like year long, three hundred sixty five day grind and commitment. So like that goes in everything: what you eat, how you sleep, where you go, what you do, where you know, what I'm saying. Like you, your level of commitment has to go to another level because it's gonna be early mornings, weights and practice. Then you're gonna have to go take a shower, go to breakfast. Breakfast is gonna be mandatory. Yeah. You gotta go to class throughout the day, make sure you stay on top of your grades. You're gonna have a study hall through the day. You're gonna have weight sessions, individual workouts, um, then film, you know what I'm saying? Like, like that's like the bare minimum that you gotta do. Yeah. That's not even when you start talking about what else do you wanna do to put yourself and separate yourself. Yeah. You want to do extra work, and so like it's a full day, and, like, and that's for the whole year, not just during the season. Yeah. Like our season just finished, not even two full weeks ago, three weeks ago maybe. Yeah, three. I think it was three weeks ago almost now, but not even three full weeks. And like we start back Monday, you ready yeah. for the next year? Like it's a full time commitment, man. But you ain't got to really fall in love with the game. Yeah. So the next question I ask, um, I remember Gaming Colin. You might not think it's your best game, but. I think you made like six or seven threes, and it's like a real good game. I don't remember what you ended with. I think like was it you, Southwest. Yeah, it was Southwest. Yeah, yeah. Southwest. I know you, Debo, and Bisco was all hot that night. Mm -hmm. Um, which one was you talking about? Yeah. Like, okay. Well, so you, you can tell me that story. Then tell me what you think your best game was. Okay. Um. So going into the Southwest game, you talking about it's it going in right? Yeah. You're going to the Southwest game. Southwest was a. They had a lot of hype. They had like yeah. six or seven guys that were gonna go D one next year. I want to say, I don't think they were ranked in the country yet, like top 25, but I think they were getting votes to be ranked top 25. And you're talking about my freshman year, right? Yeah, so this is this my freshman year. I act, I wasn't starting a majority of this season. One of our better players, Vincent Phillips, yeah. he got kicked off the team that morning yeah. before we played Southwest. And so it just threw me into the starting lineup. That was my first career start. Yeah. And I don't know if it was just the juices of you know going with it, or like in just a moment, 
Like I just, I feel like I'm on, on, on another level from the beginning of the game. Like I think I started the game off with three maybe. Yeah. And like I just feel like I was on another level the whole game. And it was like it'd be games as a shooter where the basket just feels like wider than normal. Yeah. And he's like, as long as you get it up, like it's going in. And that was just one of those nights. And it was kind of personal. You know, my god brother uh, Antonio Coward, he yeah. played in Macomb. Um, he never let me live down the fact that we never beat Macomb while we were in yeah. high school. And so I was like, well, I can't get that back. And, you know, we didn't play our senior year against them. Yeah. And so I was like, I can't get that back. But I was like, you know what I'm saying? So that was real personal. So I, uh, I just played with a lot, of, a lot of passion, a lot of energy that night. Yeah. Ball was going in. And so that was a real good night. Yeah. And personally, my personal favorite game actually was my sophomore year at Southwest. Yeah. I think I hit maybe five or six threes. But like, they were timely. Yeah. Like, they were all big. I think I went the whole first half. I didn't hit a three the whole first half. Until the end of the first half, like late in the first half, I think we were down by like maybe we were down more than half. I don't remember how much it was, but it was it wasn't really a close game. It was kind of like nine to eleven ish. And so before we went into the locker room for halftime, Coach Bills, I pulled me to the side and he was like, "What we gotta do to get you going in this game?" Yeah. And I was like, "Just give me some attempts. Like I'm yeah. ready to roll. Like I just felt like I wasn't getting enough attempts up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so I think he might have drawn up a couple plays for me." And then for some reason, Southwest decided to go to a full court zone press, yeah. like a one three one look in a yeah. press. And so I was just in the corner, spotted up, ready to shoot. And so I might hit three or four of them back to back to back. And they kind of just opened up the game and kind of took off. And that was that was that was really the game too that kind of got my recruitment going a little bit. Yeah. Because at the time, I might have like one or two schools kind of talking to me. And because Southwest had so many talented players, there's yeah. a lot of players, the coaches there actually to watch them. Which we actually were still undefeated at the time, I believe. I think we were eight, you know, they were like seven and one. But they had a lot of talented guys that were supposed to go D one next year and stuff. So there was a lot of coaches in the gym. And so after the game, you know, a lot of coaches coming up to me and stuff. Like that was the game that was like, because like at the time I really was like questioning whether I was gonna be able to play basketball at the next level yeah. after JUCO. And so that was the game where I was like, yeah, I know I can play at this level. And coaches were coming up to me and stuff. And so that that was personally my my best game, in my opinion. All right. So next question would be. Who would like the who would you say was some of your better competition you played against? In like Juco or high school or just out of just, just say who who you played against for like some of your best competition? I, I think hands down, I always say this and I might be a little biased, yeah. but Antonio Coward is the best high school player I played against on our high school schedule. Yeah. Um that that's my opinion, I guess I might be biased, but that's hands down the best player I played against in high school yeah. in Mississippi. Um I think but I played AAU ball with team called Jackson Tigers out of Jackson. And so we were on the Nike YBL circuit. Yeah. So I know it was one weekend in particular. I had to guard Michael Porter Jr., the place for the Denver Nuggets now. Yeah. Harry Giles, I think he's with the Portland Trail Blazers now. He's like no more of our player in our class. And Miles Bridges, the yeah. players for the Charlotte Hornets now. And they were all top players in the country and stuff like that. And like that was. Those those three guys, it was a the reason they were the top players in our class. Yeah. Like I tell people all the time, Mike Porter Jr. is the most talented yeah. player I've ever played against. And like it's kind of showing now that he's in the NBA. And I think I think he's really about to take off in the NBA. So those those guys right there, for sure. Yeah. So who would you say your teammate you just really like connected with the best on the court was? Soria and Melody. Yeah. Easily. Uh Man, me and Zoe, we, we were never on the same team in rec ball. Yeah. Like playing the brigade record league. And so, like, Zoe was like that dude. Like, Zoe was yeah. always that dude. Um, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so, then we got to junior high. I was we on the same team in junior high. And, like, man, Zoe was special. Like, man, like, Zoe, like, I, when we were in junior high, man, Zoe was as good as anybody, if any seventh or eighth grade in the country, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, and like it was nice, I'd have like 16 points and 12 rebounds. Yeah. And nobody even knew it because and so had 30. Yeah. And like it was a game, matter of fact, we were playing Antonio and them against against McComb when we were in eighth grade. So hit a shot to tie the game, to send it to overtime, hit another shot to tie the game, to go to double overtime, then hit the game winner in double overtime. Yeah. Had like 30 some points. Like it was just unreal. Like I always like that's the clutchest player I've ever played with too. Like yeah. it was I 
as long as those in the game, I always thought we had a chance to win. Yeah. Then even in high school, it was ninth grade, we started point guard grade in a five A yeah. district. Now he had a lot of buzz. I think he had a buzz. Yeah, he had a buzz. Like that ninth grade year, like that, like that. He just had that clutch gene, but like, yeah. like so worked for all that. Like yeah. it wasn't no thing where it was just like oh, I'm just talented. Like Zoe was talented for sure, but like it was times like Zoe would get the janitors to come open the gym from early in the morning before yeah. classes, then take a shower and stuff. And then like he staying after practice, getting up shots. He going to run on his own, lifting on his own. Even when we got the Colleen, like I tell, like me and Zoe talk very often. Like Zoe made me the player I am now. Yeah. Like I'm not a Division One basketball player if it's not for Zoe yeah. Because me being the competitor I was, it wasn't like a competing with Zoe thing. Yeah. But I couldn't watch him go to the gym mm -hmm. and I not go in there. Yeah. Like if it was a late night, I couldn't let Zoe be in the gym getting shots up, and I went in there with him. Yeah. And like they, they kind of carried over to the court. And like like that that's my guy. Like that's one of my best friends yeah. forever. Like that's my guy. Missouri made nuts easily, hands down. All right. So, my next question kind of, this is my opinion. I'm going to get mad and let you get yours. Mm -hmm. But who your top five just from? I'm going to just let go all from Mercator. Who top five from Mercator? Top, I like. All time. Just say all time from Mercator. We got, a, we got into an argument about this very recent on Instagram. Yeah. Because of who my top five was, all that. Yeah. And so, I can only go off players I saw. Yeah. Like I've heard stories about players, but I can only you know say my yeah. who I saw. I know me and Leo like to argue about yeah. this too. Like, and I tell I tell people this all the time. I was not the best player on my high school team. Like I'm a Division One basketball player, but I never was the best player on our team. You talk about Zoe, Sean, Debo, Nunu, yeah. like Denarius. Like we were loaded yeah. with talent, loaded. And so like I I can never take credit and say man I was the best player on our team. Yeah. That would be a flat out lie. And so Deep Ryan, like we were loaded. Yeah. Like, we got a lot of talent. Um, so my top five personally, I gotta say Leo Garrett. Yeah. I saw him play when my dad was coaching him. Lazori Magnolti. This is no order. I'm yeah. just giving five. Leo Garrett, Lazori Magnolti, like starting as a ninth grader, probably hit the thousand point club, and if he didn't, it was only because he was a great teammate. And yeah. he didn't care about scoring all the time. Demarius Brooks, who came in as a ninth grader on a team that was already loaded and still yeah. separated himself as a starter as a ninth grader. I got to go. Leo's up Debo. Yeah. They're going to get mad at me. I got to go to Darius Thrasher, Duke. All right. Got to go Duke. Hey, best thing I'm gonna be mad about. Yeah. But I, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm taking Duke. Like, yeah. Me and Zoe talk about it like all the time. Talent-wise, yeah. Duke is really the most talented player. If you work his that we had out. like in the last decade or so. Duke's biggest thing was just he didn't. Number one, he didn't have a team around him like this. Yeah. Number two, he didn't have the same coach we had. Yeah. The same coaches we had, and so like the style was just a little different. But you got he averaged twenty some points this year. Came to that it. Yeah. He's athletic, like he got the bill, and I really think once he gets to college, I think he had the best college career any of us had. So that's my opinion. Um, so that's four. I had somebody else. Um, I I might be missing somebody, so y'all forgive me if I forget somebody. But I gotta go, Khalil New, who somebody I played with. Like Khalil easily could have went got thirty a lot of nights. Yeah. And like teammates might not always agree with how he played, but Khalil was a bucket. Yeah, he was. And I gotta give this is gonna make six, but I gotta give Father some love. Yeah, thousand point score. Um, kid plays college basketball now. Like me and Father stay into it about yeah. whatever, but like just watching him mature now. Like I'm super proud of watching him from mature from being a ninth grader when we were seniors to watching him now playing in college. I got that's that's my guy. Yeah, you almost got the exact same with Mad. I about to change out one or two, but it's this guy named Mary. He didn't finish for Kate. I know him here. Yeah, I, know him. I put a mirror in there. I got you. No, he loved that. Yeah. But I would definitely put a mirror. Because I would be one there for sure. I'm trying to find it. What should I? I won't, I won't put Duke in there just because his Brookhaven career. They really did that. And my last one, I got to think on because it was like a lot of. I'm going to give the one to older. I would say there's a lot of guys that's yeah. right there. Like, but that feels spot kind of hard for me. Right. It, it, like, you really could go. Man, you could go 10 deep and you could argue one through 10. Yeah. In all honesty, like, like I, like I said, we just talking about guys we saw. Yeah. Like, 
old heads and like people that was around like in the you know the eighties and the nineties, yeah, that give you a whole nother list. They won't even include nobody that we saw play in high school. Yeah. So I mean, I don't, it's everybody's opinion. Um, like I mean, it's just that's just mine. Yeah, that's mine. And that, you know, I had to ask you this: Who the goat? Is basketball in general who the goat? In general? In general, who the goat? I gotta go, Mike. Why? I gotta go, Mike. And I, I'm a LeBron fan. Yeah. I'm a LeBron fan. Like I love LeBron. And like, there's nobody else even in a conversation with Mike other than LeBron, in my opinion. Yeah. Like, I just gotta get Mike the edge. Like Mike was dominant. Like Mike was head and shoulders above everybody else. And like, the thing I look at it too, if you play them in both generations, I think LeBron and Jordan both have similar success. But I think Jordan is even more dominant now than he would have been in that era. So that's my one. I think LeBron kind of gives us the same numbers and the same style of play. Yeah. I think Jordan averages like 40. If he plays in today's area, can't, hand, can't touch him, can't handshake him, get to the free throw line more. And like the game's evolved a lot though too. So yeah. I, I, I take that into account. Like I'm a, I'm, I, I'm a, I try to call myself like a basketball historian. Like I kind of watch old yeah. games often and you know, just try to study older guys and stuff like that. So I'm not taking for granted anything that LeBron is doing or anybody else. But personally, I just, I gotta go Mike. All right, and then uh, the last question before we get to the final four is, you know what I'm saying, what are some of the things that you do? Kyle was I interviewed, uh, what was his name, Daylon Bowman, mm -hmm. plays football, mm -hmm. number six here. I know he was just talking about the way he came in, the way he studied the game, the way he changed his diet, or just it's a total different from him his sophomore junior to his senior and coming into college. What are some things you changed up and really zoned in and started studying it? Better and stuff like that. I'm gonna be honest, the first year I was here, even before I got hurt, like I was telling one of our kind of younger players that's a freshman, I was telling him this uh, a couple of days ago, I really kind of lost focus once I got to Jackson State. Like at Colleen, you in West yeah. Mississippi, you don't have nothing else to do. I was in the class, I was in the gym. I was in the class, I was in the gym. Gym, gym, gym. Like, mm -hmm. And so like I lived in the gym, and then I got to Jackson State, and it was like, a lot more to do. It's a lot more to do. Yeah. Like you got the high spots going on, you know, you got Greek stuff, you got parties, you know, just girls in general. Yeah. All that like all these different events going on on campus and stuff. And kind of, I kinda of lost my focus. Um and so I wasn't getting in the gym as much. Like I still go to the gym, but it wasn't yeah. all the time like it was. And like they showed in my play. Like I started struggling shooting the ball a little bit, gaining a little weight, I'm eating good in Jackson, like you know, there's a lot yeah. of different eating spots and stuff eat good, gain some weight, start worrying about girls and stuff, you know, lost yeah. focus and stuff like that. So what I, when it really clicked for me was after the injury. Yeah. So after the injury, I hit the weight room real hard. Like I had put down some weight too with the injury. And so like I hit the weight room real hard. Once I get out of the cast, that went, I went into a booth. But like once I, I could take a booth on and off, so I really kind of get back to lifting and so I started eating right. I actually stopped eating meat for a long time just to get my body back right. Yeah. Um, and I really felt the difference with that. Now I have gone back to eat meat since, yeah. but like there are times where it's like I can feel my body kind of getting back up and down. And I said, I'm not gonna eat meat for a couple weeks. And then that kind of picked back up, you know what I'm saying? And so like, he, like I, my diet really changed a lot. Um, just what I was putting into my body, I started paying more attention to that. I started getting more sleep. Like that was a big emphasis for me one time. Cause like we practice in the mornings here at yeah. State. So it's like, I can't go to sleep at one, two o'clock in the morning and be out all yeah. night and expect to go have a good practice at six o'clock in the morning. Like yeah. my body's just not gonna work like that. And so I started focusing on getting more sleep. Um, like I just kind of, I rearranged my priorities. Yeah. Like that was the biggest thing for me. Like I went back, it was basketball, like school and basketball, it was priorities. Everything else had to fall in line. Yeah. And before it was kind of just, everything was kind of up, you know, in the air. And so once I really liked it on my priorities, like I said, changed my diet, really just got back in the gym more, it started showing my plate. All right, so next, next segment of the show is our final segment of the show. It's called a Fatal Four, and it's four quick and easy questions like that's everybody. All right. So if you walked out to the app today and somebody cut you a million dollar check, what would you do with it? Ooh. Million dollar check. I, I, personally, right, for me personally, yeah. a million dollar check, I'm gonna go start a gym. Yeah. Like, a, like I've, I've all, I wanna own like a training facility, like for athletes in Mississippi, like where we work on, we come in, work on your skill set, your individual game, 
as well as the strength and conditioning part. Like that's something that kind of goes with my major. Yeah. And that's something that's also a business where I would kind of could make money back. Yeah. Like so that that would be one thing I would do. But I still have a lot left over probably. Uh, so probably I might just buy the land for that. Yeah. So I could sell the land or something like that. something in there though. It'd be something with starting a business or something like that probably. All right. If you can go network with anybody, who would you go network with? Hmm. Tough question. Jeff Bezos. Sure. Bezos. Genius. 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 Yeah. Sure. So the next question would be, if you can go back and talk to your 17, 18 year old self, what would you tell them? Pick a sport. Yeah. Like looking back, like and it's crazy because like I always, every time somebody was saying like just pick a sport, I was like why? Yeah. Like I was kind of good at all three. Like I was never like the best player on all three teams, but I was one of the better players on all three teams. And so, but like knowing what I know now, if I had just focused on basketball from the time I was 16, 17, 18, and just played that, I, yeah. there's no telling how much better I would be. But they did some part, started in three sports though. Right, and I mean, I, I agree, but like if I knew yeah. that I was gonna play basketball, because at the time I didn't know which sport I was gonna play in college, yeah. so I didn't want to pick one and pick the wrong one. Yeah. But if I knew I was gonna pick basketball, I would have just focused on basketball, really trained in the offseason. Like I never like was just, all right, I'm gonna focus on this sport during the offseason. I never had an offseason. Yeah. If we lost a football game on Friday night, I was in the gym Saturday morning. Yeah. If we lost a basketball game on Friday Saturday night, I was at baseball practice. You know what I'm saying? Monday morning or whatever. So that that would be the one thing, and it, I think my body has my body feels too yeah. the fact that I played three sports in high school. And I'm like, I, my body starting to wear down, like a lot of neck in, neck yeah. injury, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, I pick a sport, that'd be my, that'd be my advice. All right, so the last question would be, if you can choose, I'd have your credit line, the wrong credit line, based on the credit card, it has half a million dollars on there. You can use as much as you want, but you gotta pay it back, or you can just get 500,000 cash, which one would you take and why? This is gonna sound bad and embarrassing, but I don't know nothing about credit. Right. Like, I'm really not the most, um, I'm not the most economically inclined person. Yeah. And so I, that is something I've actually recently started to kind of learn about and work on. So give me like a year and I have a great answer for that question. All right. <laughs> yes, sir. This man, D. Will, my boy. Appreciate yes, you. Sir, you, you want to give me all your social media handles? Don't know what they can uh, you. Follow me on Twitter at I am underscore D Will. Follow me on Instagram at D Will dot twelve. And that's really it. Yeah. Did anybody like inspiring athletes or anything? Did me ask you a question or something? Nah, for sure. For sure. I'm an open book on um, outside coach A U team, Snake Pack Elite. We actually got a tournament coming up this weekend. So any young guys that, you know, play ball or whatever, you want to train or get with our AU team. Feel free to reach out. All right. Any closing words for any young athletes? Nah, I appreciate it, man. All right. It's been Legendary Visions, and we out.